Hello, uh, my name's Kev. I've just found out about a cheaper place you can get a hair transplant. Uh, it's actually done in Turkey. It seems pretty legit. I actually once got a quote for a hair transplant in the UK and it was, well, 10,000 pounds wasn't gonna cut it at all. Now, if you can see, I have some hair, but not as much as I would like. I would love for the day to come where I could do this again. <sighs> but that's just me. Uh, this place in Turkey that we found uh, is quoting me £1,300, I think, for what they call £5,000, 5,000 implants of hair follicles, which they take from around here and then embed in somehow. It's all very clever. Uh, so this video is gonna be my little journey, uh, taking you from me deciding to do it, which is now, uh, to hopefully the results of it all looking wonderful and fab. Morning, so it's a little bit later. Um, I've been WhatsApping a nurse, which is kind of cool because she answers all your questions. Uh, I've paid a hundred pound deposit, which has booked my procedure. Uh, I think there will be 1,200 left to pay. Uh, I've got flight tickets booked, eek, to Turkey. Uh, I'm away for three days. I go out on a Sunday afternoon. I have the procedure done on a Monday morning. I heal all Tuesday and I come back Wednesday. Um, flight cost around about 200 quid. Now there's not loads. Uh, there's two airports nearby. You want the main international Istanbul airport. I think that's what it's called. It's the closest one to the clinic. There's two, but that one will be cheaper taxi wise. Uh, the taxi will meet, meet me at the airport. Um, all of this information came by this WhatsApp group with the nurse called Buse, uh, who has been very helpful. Uh, what else should I be telling you? I need to get a visa. That's the next thing I need to do, um, just to travel in Turkey. So I'll be doing that and then I'm having the procedure done next month. They reckon it will be about two weeks for most of the scars to heal up, which I'm crossing my fingers for because I've taken two weeks off work. So I'm just gonna rock back up after a couple of weeks away and be like, hi, do you like my new do? Uh, we shall see if that happens, uh, but yeah. Full steam ahead now. Hello, me again. Right, so I go next week. Uh, I've got my friend here. Um, and I've had to grow my hair out. Well, as much as I can, just so they can see what they've got to work with. I have bought my visa, my entry visa for Turkey. Cost me 20 quid. Uh, say goodbye to these bits of scalp. because uh, shortly they will no longer exist. Off next week. And now I'm here at Heathrow, flight's about to go. Wish me luck, say goodbye to this. Four hour flight, pretty smooth going, other than slipping in some sick in the queue, but the queue was fast moving, even though it was very long. I've now just got to find my liaison where I'm getting picked up and um, taken to the hospital, I guess. I found my driver. He didn't have my name under him, so it took a while. I tried to speak some Turkish. It didn't go down well. Staying in a rather fancy hotel, which is quite nice. Morning. It is the day of the surgery. Um, won't lie, tits a bit nervous. I mean, it is a surgical procedure. My name is Kevin, I come from England and I'm having my hair transplanted. Um, I'm excited actually. Uh, 
come from England and I chose the clinic centre because it had a very good reputation and the price was good too. Well, here I am, fresh off the butcher's slab. Be careful. Seven and a half hours total. Uh, four and a half thousand follicles moved. I uh, won't be a lying. Lying, it does sting a little bit. Um, worst bit, by far, was the um, local anaesthetic. They put about 30 of them in, and that's not pleasant but you'll need it. After that, um, you'll probably need a top up every now and again because they might wear off or they haven't gone around the edges enough. Um, everyone was very friendly in there. Um, I get why it's cheaper than the UK. I think it's just a little bit less formal. Um, <laughs> the doctor made me a sandwich halfway through. At the very end, he carried my bag out. He held me a taxi. Yeah. Very polite, a um, little bit odd. He ripped a wagon wheel in half and gave me half at lunchtime uh, and then nipped off possibly to have a cigarette. Um, but yeah, it was weird. There's a lot of sitting around. I would definitely recommend having some music. Don't bother with a book, you won't get a chance. They'll slab some gauze over your face and pretend that you're not a human for the day. Um, okay, so. I'm now basically sitting uh, for the next couple of days. I'm planning on calling a lot of room service. Um, I'll give you a, a top up as we go. Um, pretty much, the blood might darken a bit. The bandage is coming off in two days time. But this is basically how I will be flying back home to England. And that's the bit that I'm struggling with most at the minute. He's looking like a plum. <laughs> Too late. Because I look like a plum. First day after the procedure. Won't lie, woke up feeling pretty glum. Um, not so much pain. I had more sleep than I expected as well. They give you one of these kind of travel pillows uh, just to kind of keep your head upright um, because you can't roll around. They do want you lying on your back for your first night's sleep, it's to help drainage. Yeah, there was a, a bit of leakage. It wasn't the nicest, you have to, well, I wrapped all the pillows and stuff up because the hotel staff must hate it. What I would recommend if you're going through a similar procedure is force yourself up, have a very careful shower, kind of like chest down, put on something nicer, be careful though, um, baggy vests are good. Um, and you do need to be careful not to kind of touch any of this. Um, spray yourself with some aftershave, put on something nice, go down for breakfast and front it out. Um, I was told there'd be a few people having similar procedures, so I wouldn't be the odd one out. There weren't. Um, nobody said anything was the most uncomfortable I've been so far. I kept my head down, which is ironic, ironic really, because by keeping my head down, they've got more of a view. I think I'll be better when this comes off, which is tomorrow. Uh, so for now, I'm going to hide away in my room. I have books uh, and I have things to do. And there's room service. And with a Turkish exchange rate, it's a fucking steal. to have the bandages off and my hair shampooed now. See how it looks then. How was your overall experience with us? It's been very good. Uh, everyone's been very friendly. There's always been someone on hand to translate when needed. Um, and I've got no complaints. How was your communication? 
engage with the doctor, patient service coordinator and host. All the communication that you need is easily done. Um, some basic commands and words are understood. Uh, so I had no issues there at all. What did you think of your hotel? The accommodation was amazing. So far, how do you feel about your procedures? Um, I'll let you say it's early days, but you managed to do more than I was expecting you to do. Uh, and we shall see how it pans out. What are your suggestions for the people who might go through the same procedure? I think definitely do it. If you can find someone that's had it done before, then speak to them as well and find out some of the experiences that they've had. Uh, look at videos like these so you can find out what's in store for you. Uh, I do think doing a bit of research is an excellent idea. So, well, thank you for choosing Clinic Centre and making time for this interview. We're very glad that we met you and hope to see you again. So if you buy the three month supply of medical treatment, you might want to double think that. It uh, didn't make it through customs, so a lot of the stuff that I've just spent a lot of money on has been ripped off and thrown away in front of me, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, you might be able to get away with it if you have bags in the hold, but as I was carry on only, it was not acceptable. Uh, he did not believe it was medicine, which would have made it exempt. He said it was shampoo, so uh, yeah. Frustrating. I'm now in the airport in Istanbul. It is busy, there is nowhere to sit. I'm a little bit fed up uh, and I've got a long wait now. Back in Heathrow, there was a few people having had similar procedures on the plane, so I didn't feel a complete wanker. Uh, very tired now, a um, bit weak. A little bit shaky, so I need to take it easy. Just waiting for my driver. A driver. Waiting for my lift back to my car. Day three. First night without bandages. Back at home, that's good, but first night without bandages wasn't comfortable. Um, I thought it would be easier to sleep forward like that, but um, honestly, probably be easier just to front it out you can't really damage the back, it's just really painful. Um, so, have a go at that if you're going through it. I'm looking forward to getting days four, five, six, seven out of the way. Um, it's getting there, but it's very sore. Morning, four days after the procedure today. Um, got a bit more sleep last night, although it's still sensitive at the back. It's um, not too painful, so I was able to lie um, reasonably simply and have some kip. Um, what I'm going to show you is some of those maintenance that you have to do. They give you all sorts of pills and potions after the procedure. I'm on some tablets. Uh, there's a whole bunch of painkillers and stuff anyway that they give you. I've almost finished those at four days so five or six days they'll be gone but those tablets are more supplements for hair growth. And you then have post-op gel and post-op foam. Now the gel basically is going on the scalp and you leave it on the scalp for a little bit to soften scabs. Uh, and then you wash it off with some light spraying. Uh, and then the foam is basically pre-mixed shampoo because you can't lather your head and it's all about a dabbing motion. Um, it takes it out of me doing it on my own still, I must admit. Um, I will show you what I can. Uh, and again, once you've foamed up, spray it off and then just... They said dry your head with paper towels, but it's all dabbing. I just think I'll let it dry naturally. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to be doing now. So first stop, we're literally gooping this stuff on our head.
and then we're pressing it in very carefully. And you'll want to be careful because it feels very strange, like tiny pins are just all sticking over your head. The idea being to get the gel in and around all of the hair and onto the scalp. Pay particular attention if you've got some real bloody bits. Because the point is, we're trying to soak them up and get rid of them. And then the difficult bit, do it around the back as well. So I'm just gonna do that now. Then once it's all covered up, leave it for about 15 minutes to soak in and get some of your blood clots nice and loose. Mm. During which time you might as well have all your vitamins, some of which you need to have a full stomach for. Then after your allotted time, you give it a good old squirt um, and get the gel off. It's, um, oh, excuse our hideous bathroom by the way, I haven't decorated it yet. It's not gonna be like this forever. What you'll find is, um, now I'm a few days in, I can get a bit closer and a bit forceful, but you weren't able to do it like this previously. This is where it gets messy. If you have someone to do it for you, my other half's at work, but if you've got someone to do it for you, it makes life a lot easier. Tip your head backwards though, rather than forwards, because you don't want pressure at the front of your head. Trust me. And then you do this until all the gel has come off. It's going to take you a minute. Then, then it's foam time. It's basically the same process. This is cleaning the hair. There's some antibacterial stuff in there. And you're just covering it over. This one you only leave on for about four minutes. and then do it at the back as well. This one's a bit of a bitch if you get it in your eyes. So be careful. I have no idea if I'm pointing the camera in the right spot. <laughs> Tastes good. Then when you're done, you'll probably find you need to clean up a bit. Uh, your head will be sore. And that is the process that you're going through every day. Um, certainly for the week, um, possibly a bit longer. I'm still figuring that bit out. Well, it's day eight since the procedure. Um, I ventured out because it's getting semi-presentable. Had a bit of a breakthrough in the last couple of days where we've been keeping it moist and shampooed and cleaned. The scab's crusted up a bit. I have shed quite a bit over the last couple of days, which is a bit grim, but it's getting there. The sides and the back aren't too bad, but I can't see them. So uh, people will just have to put up with it. But yeah, day eight, and I'm out. Well, it's been three weeks nearly since the procedure. Um, as expected, the hair that was growing through has started to fall out. 
Uh, I knew it was coming, but it's a little bit disheartening anyway, because um, you get all excited. I think you see the back as well. It's healing up quite nicely. Uh, the sides. Still somewhere to go, so this is three weeks in now. Um, I've stopped using the medical shampoo and I'm now on a serum. Uh, I'm taking herbal supplements. Um, yeah, so this is three weeks. Good afternoon, we are now a month on. Um, okay. My routine is mostly um, shampooing, seruming, and eating supplements. I have no idea if I just showed you everything okay there. Um, I would say at this point, one month in, um, wasn't worth it. It all grew through the top. It's all fallen out. That was to be expected. Um, and it is starting to grow through again. You can see. And none of that was there before. So it is early days, um, but at this point, it's quite frustrating. Boy. So it's been about two months now. Um, there is some progress. People that haven't seen me for a while tell me that it's quite a lot better than it was. It's frustratingly slow from my point of view, however. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. When it goes through, there's a little brittly scabby bit on the back of each hair sometimes, which makes you want to just kind of scratch and pull it out. It feels a bit weird. Um, there's some um, issues with ingrown hair as well. So my scalp started healing over and the hair was growing underneath. So you get your other half or someone just to sort of help massage, almost like pick the hair out. There'll be nothing there and then bing, you've got a really long sprouty one once it's broken through. Um, it's coming on slowly but surely, too slowly. See you in a month or so. Hello, it's been three months. It's coming on quite well, I think. Uh, it's very frustrating uh, because, oh, not so well at the back, although that was only whatever they had left over. Um, I can see where it's going, but it's not there yet. The hair's starting to come through quite nicely, but it's very thin baby hair. And it will be getting thicker over the next however many months. Uh, they tell me that I can't shave my head for like the first six months after the procedure, which is super annoying. Um, but depending on who you ask, some say it doesn't really make a difference. Um, oh, it is still worse at the back. I've got a pop a little monk thing going on. Uh, but I can't shave it. I can't do anything with it yet not for a little bit longer. I think I'm going to leave it maybe four months, just split the difference. Uh, and then I'm going to shave it and then let it grow through at its own pace thicker because the whole procedure is meant to take up to 10 months. So once I can shave it down, uh, I can then let it grow back at its own time. But at the moment, it's a, a bit of a frustrating stage where I can see where it's going. It's just not getting there fast enough. So three months. See you in a month. Hello. It's four months. I must confess that shortly after I did the three month um, clip, I shaved my head um, because I was very conscious of how much of a monk patch I was having. Um, and I redid it again. I've got a number two, which I did a couple of days ago. Now the um, hair people, transplant people told me don't clipper your hair for six months, which I didn't question at the time, um, but various other places that have had it done say, clipper it straight away, it'll be fine, it'll help thicken it up. Others said do it after three months once it's had time to kind of heal up. So 
three and a half, four months, I figured, what the hell, let's do it. And I have to say, it's boosted my confidence again straight away. Um, because when I don't have a light shining above it, it's actually coming along quite nicely, as I'm sure you can see. Uh, I still take hair tablets. Um, I've now got my own ones. I've got them on Amazon. Um, I still put some serum in my hair, which again I bought separately. Uh, I'm using thickening shampoo, like decent stuff. But again, this is own bought now. I'm not using any of the um, products that the company supplied me. There's still a few patches at the back here, which get a bit dry um, and I find myself scratching at them occasionally. Uh, one or two follicles never took, so only li literally one or two over the course of the last few months. And you sort of, you scratch them and you suddenly find one's come out. It's just like a, a dead bit of skin really. Um, but the vast majority have, and it's getting there nicely. And my head's pretty much healed up. Uh, it's still numb in places, which is normal because apparently the pressure is so high and the blood, yeah, I don't know, but um, it's it's difficult for the um, anaesthetic to get all the way out. So it's nearly gone, but uh, yeah, it's four months in and there's still a couple of patches which are a little bit numb, not completely dead. Uh, yeah, so now we're at the final kind of halfway stage of the hair process. And my scalp's healed up and everything, but it's just a case of the hair thickening now. So, yeah. I don't know that I'll shave it again, because now it's all evened out to one level. Uh, I'm sort of coping with it a bit better. Uh, but I will guess I will see you at the five month stage, uh, where it will either be short still or not, but hopefully you'll be able to see that it's thicker. Later it's Hello everyone. Uh, we're now on six months. Uh, it's been clippered a couple of times. Because I can now. Uh, and I think it is starting to thicken up. Uh, certainly that's the impression that I'm getting and what people are telling me. Even now, I've still got a few little stubbly bits at the back, which are very difficult not to scratch at um, because you're kind of used to the fact that there might be bits of scab, but it's not. There are new hairs still sprouting through. Obviously, with all the different hair cycles, some come, some go before others are even ready, so it's ongoing. Uh, so it's definitely not finished yet. Getting there? Six months in? You'd hope so. Um, yeah, see you in a couple of months. Hello, we're at about uh, seven and a half months now. I uh, just wanted to get a shot of this. It's coming along quite nicely, uh, particularly when I'm not standing under a light. When I'm standing under a light, yeah, shambles. But it's coming along. Um, I have just reconfirmed about timings because I was getting a little bit frustrated. Eight months is actually about where I should be. It says you should have a full head of hair, um, but it will be fine hair, which is where I'm at. Um, and they're reckoning a, a year to two years before your hair finishes. Just got to be patient. Say that to the dog. Nine months, nine months down. About 14 months in, I think, and it's the summer. And look, I have hair coming out the front of my hat. I am so pleased. I know that's stupid. <laughs> Fifteen months down now, end of June, uh, kind of a few months into lockdown too, hence the overall hirsute look. Um, actually, believe it or not, I can still feel 
some new hair follicles coming through. This is 15 months in. So this bit at the back up here, apparently it takes a long time for the blood circulation to get to it because it's so thin and squeezed up against your scalp. Uh, and so they understand that these bits tend to grow quicker than these bits. Um, I'm looking forward to a haircut, but uh, all the hairdressers are shut. Hello, been about 15 months, I think. Looking a bit shaggy, I've had a few trims. It looks thinner when it's wet, I have to say. But I'm having a bit of a cut tomorrow because it's very bushy and um, lockdowns have sort of eased off a little bit. Um, but I didn't want to cut it too soon because, as you may remember, I've been wanting to blow my fringe for a very long time. And I'm hoping I can. <sighs> Did it move? <sighs> That's made me very happy. I can have a haircut now. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. Hello. It has been a whopping 18 months. A year and a half since my little trip to Turkey. And clearly I need another haircut. Now you'll see it's thinner at the back but it's not doing bad at all at the front. I'm quite happy with that actually. I do think that if it was thick all the way through and all the way over, perhaps maybe it would look less realistic, more like I'd had something done, I don't really know. I know that um, thinking back, when the people in Turkey said I had four and a half thousand follicles, uh, they would be filling out the front and working their way back and then using what was left essentially to thicken up the back. So it's thicker than it was. Believe it or not, there's still a few hairs that have not come through yet, which just seems mental. Mental. In terms of upkeep, it's been so long now, I forget to wash my hair. I'm, I'm back to where I used to be when I had hair. Um, I take the occasional supplement, I get like little soft, sweet, gummy hair vitamins from Holland and Barrett or something like that. Um, I use decent shampoo still, still thickening shampoo, but whereas I've been regularly shampooing it and all the time, oh, you know, you, you forget, you forget where you started and um, the journey is such a long one that you don't necessarily fully appreciate it. So my hair needs a wash and I haven't got around to it. Because, you know, it's one extra thing you have to do in your day that I didn't have to do before. But I'm just about to go and have my 18 month haircut. And then we will do a before and after um, where this journey has gone, what, it, what I've got to at the end of it. Um, and that will be the end of this particular journey. Right, so let's go and see what happens. I've not been here in a very long time. He used a hairdryer and everything. <laughs> and so there we go, 18 months later. That's what you get for £1,300 in Turkey. There's still gaps, there's still thin patches. Would I go back and do it again for round two? Some people do. Probably not. No, I don't think so. I am pretty happy with what I've got. Just let's have a quick comparison, shall we? Here is me 18 months ago. Can't really complain, can you?
So that's my journey. If you think it's something that you'd want to have done, if you've got a couple of questions, just ask them down below. That's what the cool kids do, isn't it? Uh, and I'll try and get back to you and help you out if I can. Good luck.